Hi there, welcome back. Uh, you are watching the Java tutorial, and in this uh, tutorial, let's learn about big decimal and uh, like we'll see how you can do calculations using Java. That's basically what we are going to do. Let's get started. I want to call this big decimal spike test. Uh, as usual, we'll write J units to check whether our understanding of the classes are right. So I would use it at test, um, add the import, and then do public void um, test accuracy of. Okay. One important concept that you need to understand is the objects float and big decimal, sorry, float and double in Java are not actually very precise representations. So when I say something is 3.5f, that is 3.5, actually internally it might be stored as 3.5. I'm just guessing here, I'm not giving you the exact value as such, but it would be stored as 3.00001, for example. And this might be stored in as 3.6000000001. That's one of the uh, problems that uh, you would face when you use float and double. And if you're using this for any financially related calculations, you might get really surprising results. And that's why uh, Java has a object called big decimal. So this big decimal is what is used if you want to do accurate calculations in Java. Let's get started with big decimal. Uh, creating a big decimal is uh, very similar to creating uh, any other object. So let's go ahead and create one big decimal. It's defined in the java.util package. So you, we need to add an import. Sorry, it's defined in the java.math package. Uh, we have added in the import. So uh, when I create the big decimal, I need to give the value it contains. The big decimal accepts different kinds of parameters. Let's directly give a value 2.3 and start off. So now assert equals. 2.3 comma amount. I'm just checking whether the value which is stored is 2.3. Uh, import the static thing. So now I have this. So if you look at this, the reason why the test failed is because it's expecting 2.3, but was 2.299999. Yes, I, I guess when I used a number as it is inside a Java program, it defaults to a double constant. So this 2.3 is a double constant, and internally it's being represented as 2.2999999, whatever. So that's now the reason why the test fails because here I'm creating an I'm using a string to create this object so it's accurately represented as 2.3 but this is not exactly 2.3 it's something like 2.299999 because I'm using a double constant to create it in here so that's our first lesson when we are talking about big decimals never use a double or a float constant to create a big decimal always use a string so let's get started with a string and let's now this is the first amount and i would want to add first amount and i would want to create another amount second amount which is let's say 2.45 so now i would want to create another decimal sum is equal to first amount dot this function which is defined in big decimal called add if i want to add another big decimal to a big decimal i use the add function so i can do a first amount dot add 
and the expected value is 4.75 so let's check whether this is working that's good so the result is really accurate uh, one important thing is uh, if I add in a 0 0 0 here uh, what happens the output is if you look at it the output is 4.750 so it says this is the output uh, the reason is this uh, the big decimal has a factor called k it is the number of digits after the decimal so here I have three digits after the decimal and here I have two digits after the is decimal in uh, addition or a subtraction uh, big decimal actually the result would have the same scale as the uh, number with the larger scale here this has a scale 3 and this has a scale 2 so the result would have a scale 3 and that's why we get a result as 4.750 and not 4.75 so if we go ahead and uh, set the scale of this to 2 so I'm going I'm doing sum dot set scale of 2 and let's check if the value which is coming back is 4.75 instead of 4.750 let's run it it fails because it's still 4.750 the reason is because uh, similar to string big decimals are also immutable so if I want to actually test this I have to create a new variable to receive the value so sum dot set scale 2 actually doesn't change sum what it does is it creates a new base decimal with the scale 2 and returns that back to so now I have to check this scale 2 and run the test it succeeds so uh, hopefully that's and I can add leave in the other test in here on leave the other assert on sum in here just to show that it still remains 7.0 so that's how uh, the uh, test let's now go ahead and rename this method to what it's testing so test this is basically testing now addition of big decimals the subtraction of big decimals will not be uh, very complicated let's go ahead and do the division of big decimals so let's try and divide to keep it simple let's go ahead and have a couple of small integer numbers in here um, and let's try to do a division so divide let's rename this variable to vision result and I'll just truncate this stuff out and I would want to check the division I know it would be something around uh, four point uh, something like four point probably five something I don't really worry about it right now I just let's see what happens if you see it now it actually throws an arithmetic exception because 55 by 12 actually does not have a, a exact answer it's actually some kind of an answer where the number is something like four point five something 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 it doesn't end so that's the reason why you got an exception back uh, that's the reason why you have to specify something called a scale whenever we do a division so when I do the division I have to specify this scale that needs to be used to do the division so how many numbers do I expect out of the division result that's basically this scale probably let's set the scale to 4 here and the next one is how should the rounding happen so if I get the result as uh, 4.33 and the scale is 1 then should it be written in 4.3 
or should it be written 4.4 so let's say i'm written 4. Point, i'm the result is 4.33 i've set this scale to 1 so the result can contain either 4.3 or 4.4 or there are rounding factors which help you to either if you do a round up then the result would be 4.4 4. the if the operator used is round down we get a 4.4 4, 4, 3 sorry let's go ahead and use that so big decimal dot round up let's do a round up here and let's check what the output would be so the output is 4.5834 so i've set a scale of 4 so it comes back as 4.5834 now this works that's good so this is the output now let's say i'm changing uh, this result and i would want actually now a division result i'll call this division result 2 and i want to do actually a scale i would only want two decimal points so if i do a round up what happens is the 4.58 becomes 4.59 so the result would only contain this and i am doing a round up so 4.58 would become a 4.59 so let's check if that's working as expected 4.59 that's division result 2 or instead of that i would say i'll call this division result scale 2 shift uh, round up that's basically what it is so division result scale 2 let's format this to make sure it's properly aligned and visible to everybody let's run the test that's good that works so similarly you have something called scale down so let's actually try and do that to uh, round down so that basically truncates whatever value you have so i have 4.59 instead of that the round down value would be that's great so that's basically all that you need to know about big decimals scale represents how many digits are there after the decimal point always remember that and also the fact that any operation uh, like an addition or a subtraction would result with uh, the result would contain a scale which is the larger of the two operands so that's basically it about the big decimals. We are creating more videos as we speak and if you want to stay updated, don't forget to click the subscribe button. If you like this video, please give us a thumbs up and feel free to share this video. Thanks for watching. Until next time.